to buy music for your... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not... Things just didn't seem right that first day. It's like things was missing. My home today, the right for a 30 year out in the parking lot. <laughs> Do you find yourself speaking in boring black and white? Our lane traffic is slow from I-90. <laughs> The Seattle radio scene was never the same, though. Brought in that, uh, Mac and brain dead. Some things were changing in Seattle, and it wasn't for the better. Oh, sure, yeah, the new stadium was going up. Yeah, prosperity was everywhere. But somehow it still didn't seem right. I mean, Griffey was still a town and all, but though it wasn't long for the world, they were going to tear the thing down. We didn't even finish paying for it. I don't know. All of Seattle just didn't seem right. Seemed like an awful lot of those Hollywood type guys kept moving into our town, taking over. If it wasn't restaurants, it was radio stations. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Some things in Seattle never change. You know, downtown, buildings keep getting taller. Traffic's still there. Yeah, Pike Place Market, the Bon Marche, Nordstrom's, they were all still there. Even Paramount. But it just seemed cold and heartless. Didn't have any of that Seattle feeling anymore. Like somebody taking your family away. We still had that statue of Hendrix. I don't know, we still had your tattoos and your piercing parlors. And, well, you know, your freaks. The music and the art wasn't much anymore either. Ever since that uh, Cobain guy died and and uh, MTV and their real world left town. Oh, sure. That hammering dude guy, he still had a job. Seemed like anybody that was made out of cold metal still had some kind of job. Oh, some things that were still Seattle, undoubtedly. You could always find something to do in this town. It wasn't falling asleep, that's for sure. Then one April Friday morning, in 99, the whole world just to seem to start to kilter. Seemed like everybody's world was just turning upside down. Might have been something Pat said. Then again, might have been just the way the fans felt about things. Hey, you guys know who Pat Cashman is, radio, local radio star? No. I've never heard of him. <laughs> you know Pat Cashman? Yeah, I know Pat Cashman, and I heard about him being off the air, and I was really disappointed. Were you? I to him every morning. Every morning? Well, almost every morning. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks. All right, you're welcome. You ever heard of Pat Cashman? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? You ever listen to his radio show? All the time? Did you like what he did? Was he funny? You know, they replaced him with an L.A. bunch of guys from L.A. Yeah, Mark and Brainless or something like that. Kind of a Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. Get him back. Get him back. There you go. Hey, thanks a lot. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm here to talk about Pat Cashman and the state of radio today in Seattle. My name is Tom McGurk, and I'm sometimes co-host of the Pat Cashman Show with my good friend Ken Boynton. And uh, I guess I'm out of a job now, thanks to Intercom, because uh, in their great wiseness, they've decided to uh, yet again import some people from California to help us to get through our morning commute, which I'm sure they understand being, what, only about 1,500 miles away. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're pretty clued into what's going on. 
So I guess the state of radio today in Seattle is pretty much that there is no Seattle radio other than listening to people outside of Seattle being broadcast in here. And uh, I personally think that sucks. Sucks! Ooh. Ooh. And uh, <laughs> even my dog Kirby agrees that... Uh, come here, Kirby. Get over here. Kirby says that the other show isn't fit for dogs. She hates it. So, and I'm absolutely incensed at Entercom for taking Pat Cashman off the air. Because they took away a good $600 a year in income from me, number one. Ah. And I have nowhere to sing my stupid songs anymore. And I can't tune in in the morning and hear anything besides someone talking about somebody else's underpants. For God's sakes. Gosh darn it. Excuse me, Tom, we have a slut line call on line one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm, that's, I don't know what else to say. Gosh darn it. How many more people have to die before the Entercom ratings gods are appeased? When will the madness end? Who's next? Maybe. You be the judge. Hey, aren't you Ego, Joe? No, man, that's not me. You sure? Get that camera out of here. What are, you not even... what are you doing in a house of pancakes? Oh, man. Yeah, I'm Ego, Joe. Ever since they canceled the Cashman show, I've been so upset. I haven't been sleeping. I haven't cleaned myself since they canceled the show. And uh, I can't cook either, so I uh, can't bring myself to make no Ego, so I've been hanging out at the IHOP. I didn't want no one to recognize me. Oh, so. man. Say it ain't so, Joe. It's so. Yeah, I'm so broken up about this, man. I don't know what to do. Intercom. I. Intercom. You're cold. You're cold and distant. You done broke my heart. I don't know what to do anymore. I, I, I wrote a recipe, and, and this recipe has to do with what Intercom did to old Lego Joe taking away my livelihood and whatnot. What you want to do is get... Just a minute. Just a minute. Sure, Joe. Sure. What? Oh, man. What you want to do is you get yourself an ego. And then you pour some vodka and orange juice on that. And you pour that over the ego. And you eat it with them suits at Intercom. And you got yourself a screw ego. That's what's been happening to me, man. <laughs> we love you, Pat. Sorry, man. I'm speaking very loudly today.
about my new student trash removal service. And oh, I have a telephone call. Hello, the buzz. No, I'm sorry. I mean, this is the trash removal service. I'm a student. Speak slowly and loudly. No, we don't handle anything having to do with programming on the buzz. Sorry. Better check my voicemail. It's a call from Marion. Well, the 
NBC. First time I called the Cashman Show was when I was trying to clear a check for uh, a freelance reporter that some claimed he worked for the station named Ted Crackerwagon. I normally don't take personal checks, and Crackerwagon said that I should call Cashman and clear it. Pat basically told me uh, that yes, he sometimes did some work, but when he asked me where I was taking him, he asked me if it was possible to possibly, uh, oh, make sure he missed the plane for some strange reason. Don't know why. I don't think he had too much of an opinion of Cracker Wagon. <sighs> even though he's one of the more reliable reporters on the show, even if he never said much. But I always enjoyed calling Pat, Lisa, and Dustin in the morning, and hey, help me keep awake in the morning. If a person can't be awake before he gets behind the wheel, he's in serious trouble. Then he drives like your average person on the road, half asleep and in serious trouble. Never know exactly what to expect, it's either on the road or on the Cashman Show for that matter, but sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches. And that's what we gotta do. at all. I don't know where anybody is. Huh. I thought there was supposed to be a protest here somewhere. Pat. Oh. oh, well. I'll just call and figure it out. I'll see if I can get him. Hello? Is there... Is, where's that protest supposed to be? I can't find the protest for Pat. I can't find it anywhere. It's, it's right there at Lake Union? Well, I'm here. And there's nobody else here? I'm the only one? Oh, oh great. So so it's all just me. All right. All right, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep doing it. I'll stay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, this is Ted Crackerwagon reporting on the protest rally for the Pat Cashman cancellation show. There seems to be not much of a turnout here. Uh, it... I thought this was going to be a lot bigger than it turned out to be. Uh, well, anyway, this is Ted Crackerator reporting for the... What? Oh, well, hell, I've been fired the heck with this, then. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I'm Professor Fred, or I, I was Professor Fred. I, since the show's been canceled, I've uh, got some free time. And, uh, you know, I... Uh, I'm kind of in between jobs right now for Hollywood. I, uh, I, I'm definitely up for some big parts. Uh, Revenge of the Vampire Vixens from Venus 2. I'm up for uh, Teenage Cat Girls in Heat 3. And uh, I spit on your grave again. So things are happening in my life. Um, I, uh, I've got a little free time. Um, like, do you have any money? Because um, I've got like a $100 bill, but nobody will cash it. So if you could just spot me like maybe five. I'd be okay for a while. I'll get back to you. But uh, otherwise, you know, um, uh, I'm not really, uh, I'm not really very discombobulated. I'm not discombobulated. I, I'm a bit constipated. I miss, I miss Pat. I miss Fridays. I got this like sore. Do you like know any any chiropractors or anything? You know, I mean, have you got like any insurance, man? Anyway, um, I'm coming back. Pat's coming back. We're all coming back. And. Uh, have a great, discombobulated, unconstipated day. Ciao. You got that money? If you got it, that'd be cool. Yeah. Later.
that uh, that Pat Cashman protest. It's supposed to be a bunch of us here. And I come? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a protest for Pat Cashman. We're we're all fans of his. I haven't heard about it. No one informed me. I swear this is where. Let me check something. Let me check because I I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Hey, hey, surf dude, where, where was that protest? At ICON. No, oh, Intercom. I swear you sent ICON off of Solutions. All right, I'm going to Inter I'm probably going to miss it. I, I, man, I'm going to miss it. I miss Pat already, and I'm going to miss that. Oh, well, thanks a lot. Bye. Oh, no. Wrong place. Yeah, well, if anybody else shows up, no. Would you like some? Oh, candy, sure, to hell with the protest. Yeah, this would be cool. Yeah, hey, thanks. Thanks a well, lot. good luck. There's somewhere I can throw these signs? I'll take them. Okay, thanks hey, a lot. Thanks. Take yeah. it easy. my last surf report because I may not reinvent myself like Fred Hopkins. I may just be sitting out here at the beach being retired with Sini the rest of my freaking life. You know, there's good and there's bad things in life as we've all had a taste of that. But you want to know that there's always another wave. After that first wave, there's another wave. Like when you drop a pebble in the pond and it makes wave upon wave. Kind of like the little family unit that we made. Kind of like you were the big drop and once you hit and went kuplunk, then you made all these other waves that we kind of caught and we all kind of rode for a while. And you know, that's really cool things because it's kind of a karma thing. It happens throughout all the universe. So I brought you down here near the surf compound to show you that we've got earth, we've got sky, and we've got water. The three essential elements to our lives. And you know what? Our lives, as good and as bad as they may be, they're our lives. And we're very happy and fortunate to have what little time we have here. So I kind of threw together this little film of all the people that happened when you went kerplunk in that big pond. And all the people that caught the wave. And that wave is love. And that wave was peaceful. And I'd just like to say thank you to Pat, Lisa, Dustin, Nate, Chris, and anybody else, including all the characters. Dudley, Hopkins. Flurm, Ego, uh, Sam, Sam, well, anyway, Mickey, you know most of them, Jackie, Smacky, Marion, what a dude, witness protection or what? I just want to say, Pat, thank you. I may not know you totally personally, but I know a part of you as much as you know a part of me. And I want to let you know that it's all good, Pat. Peace, Pat, and love to you to Lisa, to Dustin, to everybody that made this great wave, this great ride possible. It's totally cool, man. Oh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a little jiggly. I guess I've had a little too much eggnog again. Well, anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for all those fun years. You know, I've been watching you guys since you were little kids. <laughs> and I can't say it's, I like it a lot, but it's my job, you know. <laughs> anyway, the Christmas company, anytime you come down, you'll get a 30% discount. <laughs> you stop by and sell them Santa Claus, did you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> if you're having trouble finding it, just remember, it's right next door to the old surf shop. That's right. Surf dude's my neighbor. <laughs> oh, aren't you glad he's mine and not yours? <laughs>
Oh, Merry Christmas! <laughs> oh, me well, there it is. Story about a city. Seattle. Seattle, a place that wanted the sound of Seattle. The feeling of Seattle. People that called into a radio show. Of all things. They felt a certain bond. Sometimes, dreams do come true. Yeah, that's what I think about. By me. Bart Higgins. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Renton, ahead of the curve, home of the Seattle Sounders, and maybe soon Ken Schramm. I'm Clem Flurm. Won't you join me as I show you some of my favorite Renton phone booths? From this phone, I called Pat and told him the top 10 Renton City Council qualifications. This is the phone that I used to call Pat and tell him the top 10 other things on John Curley's butt. Let's see. One of the more interesting fairs I had the regarding Pat was when I got a flag over in Gig Harbor from a cow and a goat. They were sitting on the side of the freeway hitchhiking. I took pity on them, and being as Billy had a checkbook, I was able to figure out where he lived. They stayed over at my place overnight, and I got them back. The and they're very well trained. I'll give them a lot of credit. Of course, they do tend to eat like they're really not quite domesticated. And the goat had this habit of getting up in people's laps, which kind of disturbed my roommates to no end. But what do you expect? They're a cow and a goat for crying out loud. Um, keep a poem in, keep a poem in your pocket by Bernice Shank. Keep a poem in your pocket and a picture in your head and you'll never feel lonely at no one year in bed. Little poem will sing to you, little picture will bring to you, don't dream, dance to you at no one year in bed. Whose music and the art wasn't much anymore either. Ever since that uh, Cobain guy died and, and uh, MTV in their real world left town, Oh, sure. That hammering dude guy, he still had a job. Seemed like anybody that was made out of cold metal still had some kind of job. Oh, well, some things that were still Seattle, undoubtedly. You could always find something to do in this town. It wasn't falling asleep, that's for sure. Then one April Friday morning in 99, the whole world just to seem start to kilter. Seemed like everybody's world was just turning upside down. Might have been something Pat said. Then again, might have been just the way the fans felt about things. 
Hey, you guys know who Pat Cashman is, radio, local radio star? No. I've never heard of him. <laughs> You know Pat Cashman? Yeah, I know Pat Cashman, and I heard about him being off the air, and I was really disappointed. Were you? To him every morning. Every morning? Well, almost every morning. Oh. Okay. Thanks. All right. You're welcome. You ever heard of Pat Cashman? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. You ever listen to his radio show? Yeah. All the time? Yeah. Did you like what he did? Was he funny? Yeah. You know, they replaced him with an L.A. bunch of guys from L.A. Yeah, Mark and Brainless or something like that. Kind of a Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. Get him back. seem right that first day. It's like things was missing. Buy a home today, the right for a 30 year out in the parking lot. <laughs> Brush my teeth. Do you find yourself speaking in boring black and white? Our lane traffic is slow from I-90. A lot of those Hollywood type guys kept moving into our town, taking over. If it wasn't restaurants, it was radio stations. Don't get me wrong. Some things in Seattle never change. You know, downtown, buildings keep getting taller. Traffic's still there. Yeah, Pike Place Market, the Bon Marche, Nordstrom's, they were all still there. Even Paramount. But it just seemed cold and heartless. Didn't have any of that Seattle feeling anymore. Like somebody taking your family away. We still had that statue of Hendrix. I don't know, we still had your tattoos and your piercing parlors. And, well, you know, you freaks. The Seattle radio scene was never the same, though. Brought in that uh, Mac and Brain Dead. Some things were changing in Seattle, and it wasn't for the better. Oh, well, sure, yeah, the new stadium was going up. Yeah, prosperity was everywhere. But somehow it still didn't seem right. I mean, Griffey was still a town and all, but though it wasn't long for the world, they were going to tear the thing down. We didn't even finish paying for it. I don't know. All of Seattle just didn't seem right. Seemed like an awful... 